I can't help but note that yesterday we marked up a bill that would allow, you know, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of workers paid sub-minimum wage come into the U.S. with no vetting whatsoever. So if I were a potential terrorist, I think I might look at that route instead of the extensive route that you're describing. But well, moving right along. them know how to do it. <laughs> Moving right along, I would like to ask you, um, Mr. Lloyd, um, about policies relative to um, the rights of asylees in uh, your custody. I know that we're all aware that uh, so-called Jane Doe, a 17-year-old um, immigrant woman in ORR custody, was blocked from accessing and abortion and, and forced to continue a pregnancy against her will. Now, she is a minor, but a court had decided that she uh, had the maturity to make the decision on her own, uh, and yet she continued to be uh, blocked from this uh, constitutionally protected health um, uh, care. She was asking the government to pay for her care or to transport her to a doctor just to get out of the facility so that she could access a, a constitutional right that she had to terminate her pregnancy. Obviously, as a 17-year-old, she could not legally consent to the, um, I don't know this, whether she was violently raped or it was a product of statutory rape. She did, was finally released because the court did intervene. So I'd like to ask you about your general belief about the rights of women and girls um, who are in ORR's custody. Do you believe that women and girls in your custody have uh, constitutional rights like other people who are in America? Or do you think that constitutional rights for example, to due process and privacy depend on immigration status? Um, I think um, anybody, and you're referring to the Unaccompanied Alien Children Program where we provide shelters um, in a number of locations throughout the, the country, but I think anybody who comes into the United States um, comes with the potential to, to become a full U.S. citizen with uh, full rights to all the freedoms we enjoy, including the freedom to move freely, to right to bear arms, and to and to vote, and and others, um, but that's always uh, subject to a process. Uh, whether it's if they come through through as a UAC or if they come through through some other means, um, it's a process where you know as the person moves through the process, then they they gain um, additional. Well, rights. Let me interrupt because the the due process clause applies to everybody who's here, I believe. I mean, that's what I learned in law school. That's what the case law seems to say. Do you agree with that or not? The due process clause does, yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, in terms of moving forward uh, prospectively, um, the Washington Post reports, and you know, we don't know if this is true or not, which is why I'm asking you, that um, suggested that you have personally intervened to try and persuade minors not to have abortions. I would like to know, did you have direct contact with the young woman in this case that was in the paper? Do you have uh, direct contact with other pregnant girls in the care of ORR? Um, and do you have any medical training? Uh, well, uh, for, forgive me, but you know some of the answers to the questions that you're asking are my ability to, to answer them fully are, are really limited by a number of factors, I mean, including the court orders and also our, our duty to protect the um, individual. I'm not asking for a name. Mm -hmm. Have you ever contacted any anonymous young girl in, in your care oh. trying to talk her out of uh, having an abortion? Well, as, we, as uh, the director, I, I I run the UAC program, the repatriation program, and the refugee resettlement program, and I'm out in the field in, in it, many of our locations, and we and I meet with you know dozens and, and even perhaps hundreds of, of the 
people who we serve, the populations we serve. And so um, among them, I'm, I'm certain that some, some of them were pregnant at the time. I'm disturbed that we won't answer the question. Um, and my time has expired, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, the chair will now recognize the gentleman from Iowa.